Yo, what's going on guys? You're watching CSS Positioning Lesson 4 and in this video I want to show you how to float elements. <laughs> Alright then guys, so before we start coding anything at all, I want to show you a couple of things I've already done. The first thing is this div with a class of wrapper. Now that is where all of our content is going to go in this playlist. So you can see within here I've got all of this content which is commented out currently. I'm going to go through all of that in a second. But this wrapper is this white thing over here and you can see I've given it these styles down in the CSS. It's got a background of white, max width of 960 pixels, a padding of 20 pixels all the way around and then this margin of zero top and bottom and auto left and right. Now this auto value right here is what's positioning this wrapper, this wrapper div in the center and it's giving it this margin of auto left and right. Now I talk about that in the CSS for beginners playlist so I'll leave a link to that down below if you want to check it out. This final rule right here, you don't really need to pay attention to. This is just clearing some floats, and I'm going to talk about all of that later, so ignore that for now. So, what I want to do is talk about floats. Now, floating is one of the most used techniques in page layouts for, uh, for positioning content. And it lets us position an element to the very left or the very right of a parent element. And in doing so, it removes itself from that normal document flow we've been talking about. Now initially floating was designed so that a developer could wrap text around an image but nowadays it's used for other things too uh, like making text columns or grid galleries things like that okay so to begin with let's look at that image example wrapping text around the image okay so you can see right here i've got this cloud.jpg this is just a little cloud picture i found online and i'll show you guys that now just this little thing right here very pretty yeah so what i want to do is put that image right here so I'll do my image, oops, it's all capitals, image source equals uh, cloud, there we go, it's found it, alright, just like that, oh, what the hell have I done, alright guys, there we go, cloud.jpg, then it's absolutely huge, so we're just going to give that a width of 300, there we go, that'll do, right, now if we were to put a paragraph tag underneath, and I'll tell you what, let's get some lorem ipsum, shall we, lorem Ipsum. All right, Larizzle, gangster. This is what I'm talking about. Let's grab this second paragraph, it's a bit bigger. So I'm going to copy and paste that right here in the p tags and save that. Then you can see what's happening is the paragraph is going below the image. That is normal document flow, right? And that is how before floats this would have been displayed on a web page. Now, this is where floats were originally designed. Now, if we float this image, let's come down here to the styles and we'll just say image float left. What we're doing is floating that image to the left. We're taking it out of the normal document flow and we're positioning it to the very left of the document or the very left of the parent element, right, which is this wrapper. So what we'd want to do as well is give this a margin of, say, 10 pixels, just so the, uh, the text is not right up against the side. Now we can float left, which has positioned it to the leftmost uh, area of the parent element, or we can float it to the right. So if I delete this and put right instead, it does exactly the same, but it floats it to the right, and then this time the text is over here. All right, so pretty cool. Then we can mess around with this. Let's make it 400 or even 200, yeah, 100. So you see the text now goes below it, right? So as soon as the height of the element is reached, then the text can go below that image. So that was what the float was initially intended for. Let's just delete this stuff that we've just done because I want to show you some more techniques we can use um, by using the float. So I'm going to uncomment these three things right here and I'm going to get rid of this stuff here. And you can see now if I come up here, I've got these styles down here and it's just blue, red, green and box. All right, so let's uncomment those. And you can see what I've done now is just made three divs, one with a class of blue, one with red, one with green, and they've all got a class of box, right? So I've just colored the blue, red ones and the green ones by giving them a background color. And then the box I've given a height of 100 pixels. Now, by default, these div elements are taken at 100% width. That's because they are block level elements. And by default, block level elements take up 100% width, right? So what we need to do is specify a width property. I'm going to say 100 pixels, make them into perfect squares. Right now, I want to show you 
um, these floats in action, right? So what I'm going to do is come to the blue box right here, and I'm going to float this to the right. And now you can see what happens is this blue box floats all the way over to the right. But that's not the only thing that's happened. As well as that, these two boxes right here have scooted upwards, right? And that's because this blue box has been taken out of normal document flow, so it no longer um, occupies any height in normal document flow. It's been taken out of it and it's been floated to the right, okay? So that's what happens. The content underneath it then scoots up as if the floated element wasn't there at all. Likewise, I could float this red element. Let's float it to the left this time. And okay, the red element doesn't move, but the green element vanishes. You might be thinking, well, what's going on there? Well, again, we've taken the red element out of normal document flow. Now, it's not moved anywhere because it was already on the left. So we've floated it to the left, but it's not needed to move position, right? But the green one has zoomed up and it's gone behind the red element. Right, and I can demonstrate that by giving this a margin left of 10 pixels. So now you can see that little green element sneaking behind, all right? If I change this instead to float right, you're gonna see that green element is there at the top. Likewise, I can come down here and float this to the right, and it's gonna zoom it over there, or I could float it to the left, and it's not gonna move either way, We've now taken the green one out of normal document flow also. All right, so that is floating in action and you can probably start to see now how we can use this to make grid galleries. If I float this to the right, you can imagine now that we could have a gallery of thumbnails going all the way across and about four columns deep or whatever, right? So that is one of the uses of the float property. Now what I wanna do is show you one more thing. All right, we're gonna do a practical use of this float property. So I'm gonna delete these things right here, like that, and I've got some other styles down here. Well, one other style, and all this is doing, let's get rid of that comment, there we go. Okay, so what we're doing here is putting three divs in the document, each with a class of service, right? And I want you to imagine this is a website where a company has three services on offer, but they want to display them a little nicer than this. So we've got the service title in each div, and we've got the service uh, description in the paragraph tags, right? So all I've done so far is targeted those H2s and those Ps, and I've given them a color, a margin, and a text align property. So now what I want to do is flow each of these service boxes or these service divs to the left so they stack left to right. So let's do that now. We just want the service class. And then we're going to flow each one to the left, right? Still doesn't look very nice. So we'll give it some other properties. We'll say background EEE. -E -E, and then we'll say... Uh, padding, oh no we won't, we'll say width first is 29%, right? And I've done 29% because I also want to give them a margin of 1% and a padding of 1%. All right, so now 29%, and remember we've got margin left and right, so it's 1% on either side, so that takes it up to 31, yeah? then with the padding left and right as well, that takes it up to 33% in total width, right? So 33, 33, 33, which means 99% width, which is virtually the full kind of length. Now, if we wanted to get picky, we could say 29.33, and then it's gonna be 33.33% width each one in total. All right, so let's give this a height of 140 pixels, something like that. Oops, I've done 14, 140. All right, guys, so now, you can see this is taking shape. And okay, you might not display exactly like this, but oftentimes a company with a website will display the services in little blocks left to right like this. And we've used a float property right there to do that. If I was to take this away, it would look pretty rubbish still. You know, you've got all this space over here that's wasted. It's not presented in a logical way. Whereas this looks much better. All right, so this is another example of how we'd use the float property to structure uh, elements on a web page. All right, so that's it for this lesson. Uh, if you have any questions about this whatsoever, feel free to drop a comment down below. Otherwise, guys, don't forget to subscribe, share, and like, and I'll see you in the very next tutorial where we're gonna look at clearing these floats.